Okay, question two of the 2010 nuclear physics paper, Nuclear and Atomic Physics. In 1985, Ernest Rutherford carried out an experiment to determine the nature of atoms. He fired alpha particles at a thin gold foil. After carrying out the experiment, he concluded that the atoms were mainly empty space and that most of the matter was contained in a very small, very dense, positively charged object that was more massive than the alpha particle. The object later became called the nucleus. A. If there, was an air ga if there was air between alpha source and the gold foil, the air would become ionized. Explain what is meant by the term ionized. So, ionized is becoming an ion. So, uh, let's write that. Becoming... So you're causing something to become an ion. Um, if the air is ionized, that means the air uh, is becoming an ion. So what what uh, happens is the alpha source with its 2 plus charge um, has a collision with some air particles. This is not an equation, this is just uh, showing an arrow direction. With some air particles. And the air has um, the electrons ripped off it and becomes negatively charged, so the air particles. That's what's happening when something becomes ionized. Um, B. Describe the results of the experiment and clear, explain clearly how he linked uh, his results to his conclusion. So we need kind of a table here of results and conclusion and the link between the two. This should be present no problems and there are three. So one is uh, here the con most of the alpha particles went straight through with no, no deviation. And the conclusion there that the atom is mostly empty space. Okay, Some alpha particles had slight deviations when they passed through. And that tells us that there is a positive positively charged nucleus. Okay, a little bit roughly drawn, I apologise, but you get the idea. Um, and the third one was that some bounce straight back. Okay, and that tells us that there is a, a small, dense, okay, not heavy and not large, it's dense, meaning there's a lot of mass packed into a small area. So small, dense nucleus, um, and with a mass larger, or quite a bit larger, than the alpha particle. Um, if it was the same as the alpha particle, you would perhaps expect what happens with Newton's cradle, and the alpha particle would displace the nucleus. But it doesn't do that, it bounces the alpha particle all the way back, um, which um, indicates that it's quite a large, um, large mass, but it's very dense. And it's large mass only relative to the alpha particle, it's not actually a large aspect. You've heard this in class many times I'm sure. Let's move on to C. As a means of identifying the nature uh, of alpha, beta and gamma radiation, Rutherford fired them through a magnetic field. The diagram below shows the results of this experiment. This is a magnetic field into the page. So let's just put a couple of X's because otherwise I forget. Um, there we go. That should be enough. And we have to identify the three unknown types of radiation and give an explanation for your answer. You may assume all the particles are traveling at a similar speed. That's pretty important because usually a beta particle, beta particle, is traveling nine times faster than an alpha particle, and that affects our um, trajectory of this. But uh, in any case, the easiest way to deal with this is to look at the charge and how it interacts with the magnetic field according to the charge. So um, why? has no charge. I can clearly see it has no charge because it does not change direction. It does not deviate um, when it interacts with the magnetic field. In fact, it doesn't interact with the magnetic field. So why must be gamma? Uh, because no uh, deviation, so no charge. Okay. If we look at X, we can see uh, if X is a positive particle, which would be um, our, showing our thumb for right hand slap rule this is, so right hand slap. Um, the thumb is in the direction of the positive current, if, if it is positive current. Um, our fingers would go into, okay this is looks vertical on here but it's meant to be into the page. Um, that means our slap is going to be upwards, so uh, up slap, um, which is what we find here, so X must be the alpha particle because um, an upward deviation 
um, shows uh, a positive charge um, and the alpha particle has a positive charge, 2 plus. Okay, and we could test this with Z. We could just say Z must be beta because um, that's the only one remaining. Um, or we could um, actually do this. Uh, you could either use a left hand rule or you could just use the right hand rule for, and make your thumb the conventional current. In this case, if it's beta, conventional current is to the left. So for beta, conventional current would be to the left because the electron is going to the right. Conventional current is positive, uh, which is opposite to that of the movement of the electron. So you'd have your thumb to the left, your fingers into the page again, and the slap downwards, which works. So um, using the right hand rule, you can uh, prove all of these things. And there you go, that's part two.